Hello everybody, welcome. My name is Richard and this is going to be a video about taking the Model 3 Highland on a road trip to the Scottish Highlands. Uh, it's a pretty long trip because I live on the south coast of England, so we're going to travel the length of the country up into the Highlands and we'll see how we get on with the Model 3 Highland. Family life with this car, how well does it do? What range, what efficiency and what the charging experience is like? I'm enjoying some of the refinement and ride upgrades. Uh, we've already done some videos where I've been driving this in horrendous rain and snow and some videos of better efficiency and we've also done a video comparing it to the standard range. Uh, but this video, look, February half term, family life with the Highland. How does it get on? Uh, I've got the front loaded with my wellies and some camera gear. And then inside, well, look, I'm using dog mode at the moment because we've got our dog. There's Daniel. He's all muddy because he's been on a walk in his fields. Don't look sad. Looks like an RSPCA advert, doesn't it? Uh, but he's enjoyed a run around here. My daughter's already made a pretty good den out of the back seats there. And we've got the boot loaded with stuff. So this isn't me treating this car lightly. This is a loaded up family car. And actually a large part of this journey we're gonna be doing in convoy with my father-in-law and mother-in-law, Mike and Chris, and they've got a 2021 Model 3 long range. So there's gonna be quite a lot of times where we're in convoy together and we can actually do some comparisons again with this car and the differences with rural range efficiency and charging speeds. Uh, so what's the plan? It's Saturday now. So we've already traveled up from the south coast and I'm here on the Farthing Downs in South London, just not too far from the M25, uh, where my family is in Coulston. And um, this is where we've been out for a walk. So this is Saturday. And then we're going out for a family meal. I'm then staying down at Gatwick tonight, back up here first thing tomorrow morning, where we'll then depart uh, to travel to Northumberland for a stopover stay tomorrow night, Sunday night. And then from there, we're going to go up into the Scottish Highlands and stay at the brilliant Glen Orkey Farm. Set a new trip, Scotland trip, and avoided 106 miles, uh, an average 234 watt hours per mile. Now, quite interestingly with this, there's quite a lot of times where we're going to have the dog in the car with dog mode on. So for example, tonight we're going out for a family meal, so he'll be in the car, so the heating's going to be running whilst we're not even using the car, using up energy. Um, and then as I'm staying down near the Gatwick Tesla Supercharger tonight, I'm going to uh, do a top-up charge there. And I may as well use those because I used my own referral code when I bought this car, which gave me some credits, which gives me free Tesla Supercharging. So one of the great things is, and we did all this trip, for nothing if I use Tesla superchargers, so that's great. I'm at the grid serve electric forecourt just by Gatwick Airport, literally right next to the airport. Uh, so just doing a quick top up here because uh, my hotel doesn't have charging, so on the way to the hotel now, I'm just topping it up a little bit. Fantastic place this, it's got an amazing shop, coffee shop, lounge everything upstairs. Four Tesla superchargers, but just tons of other grid serve high power chargers. A fantastic site, amazing. All these chargers here and at nine o'clock on a Saturday night, I'm the only one here. <laughs> anyway, big journey tomorrow, so I'm off to the hotel in a minute. Here's some sleep. We set off early. Good morning, everyone. So now it's 7.30 on Sunday morning, bit of an early start. And now uh, we're going to travel from here. Uh, we're on the Mac Clackett Lane services in the southern section of M25. And we're going to be heading up to Northumberland from here. So from here, we'll be in convoy. So my 2024 Model 3 long range and this 2021 Model 3 long range. Uh, on a late 2021, but probably, I think it's still the 75 kilowatt hour battery in this one. Uh, so it's cold, wet. <laughs> Not very nice weather. It won't be brilliant for efficiency, but we'll see what we get. In my car, I've got 88% of the battery. And in the red car, we got 93% battery. So for the same journey, how much battery will each car use? And will the newer car be more efficient? Sums out at last, which is good. Uh, we we're an hour and 40 minutes in, and we're already talking about toilet stops. So, we're gonna actually, the cars have got enough charge to go to Leeds, but we're going to divert into Grantham, which is about 35 minutes away. So, as ever, really, we need to stop before the cars do. Before we do that, the cars are now preheat for charging, that which will affect the efficiency numbers. Now, the roads have been wet, so efficiency again hasn't been brilliant. I've got 262 watt hours per mile. Uh, the other car's been about 10 watt hours more, more. So again, what we expect really, this one is just a little bit more efficient. Uh, he's just come down to 269 watt hours per mile. So at the moment, there's only about six, seven watt hours per mile difference, but typically it's been about 10. Two hours 13 in the car and everyone needs a toilet immediately. 
Let's get yeah, out. Uh, so I've arrived 34%. I can see here the other car's on 30%. So we're going to plug in at the same time and we're only going to stop for as long as we need to stop for toilet break. <laughs> right, we're all back from the toilet and we'll just unplug and go because we're bound to need to stop again. Uh, what's your battery percentage? 57 now. 58. So that one charges a bit quicker. That's what I suspected. So it catches up a little bit. Oh, I'm on 59 now. Uh, but let's unplug and go. We'll just carry on. So that second stop was at Scotch Corner and we went into the hotel there, had some food, finished that as quick as we could. As soon as we finished, we got in the cars and gone. So uh, we're both basically pretty well charged up now. We move forward and we're heading to Newcastle next. Uh, so just locked time really, 2.30 in the afternoon on Sunday now and uh, we're at a quick stopover we need to make in the Jesmond area of Newcastle. Um, so uh, what's quite interesting, I mean, I'll show you my trip so far. Uh, there we are, I'm up in Newcastle now. Um, 2.35 watt hours per mile on that last section. And again, the other car, 2.45 watt hours per mile. It's really consistently 10 watt hours per mile difference between the two cars. I've been struggling to get the efficiency I normally get on this car, if I'm honest. 2.35 is about average, actually, but um, I think it's because the road's been wet. It's quite cold, 8 degrees Celsius, and we've got a pretty loaded car. We both have quite loaded cars. I'll probably proclaim we've got a little bit more load in the Highland one, but consistently 10 watt hours from our difference. Well, there you go. Right, I'm about to sign off for the day. So finishing up the day in a pl in place called Wark. There we are, zoomed out. There we are, right in the middle. So, fair trip. Uh, last bit of drive, 247 miles per mile. The whole trip from South Coast so far, 263, over 500 miles covered. Battlestead. And it's familiar, I've been here before. It's purely by chance. All right, Daniel, Daniel, why are you loose? What are you doing? Come here, come here. Where are you off to? There's Daniel. And then they've got some quite nice cabins, so let's have a look. Pretty good, huh? Right, that's me done for today. See you tomorrow. Uh, right, Monday morning, fresh, uh, quite chilly actually, but the sun's sort of coming out in places, then it's raining, then it's sunny. Uh, but check out this solar panel here at the Battlestairs Hotel. So this will move and track the sun throughout the course of the day, in theory. It's cool, isn't it? What do you think of the hotel? Yeah, it's pretty good. It was a slightly grumpy member of staff last night in the restaurant, but the food was really good. Uh, good eco-credentials, nice place. Uh, so if you're in Northumberland, it's probably a worthy stopover and you can charge your car. However, we actually didn't bother last night uh, we've both got, I've got, I think, 66%. It's got about 63%. And we know we're going via Edinburgh later and we'll stop and charge there when we're having lunch. So we just didn't really need it. Uh, you have to pay for it, uh, which is fine, of course. 40 pence per kilowatt hour, I think it's quite sensible. Um, but I've got some free supercharging from my referral code. So I'll use the test of charge when I go through Edinburgh later. So we're going to make this trip for free. <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? All right, the dampener this morning, though, was that uh, there's some damage to Mike's car here. Um, very light, but... Nonetheless, damage is frustrating because we came and parked up out of the way in this big car park at the top, where there's nothing else here, and yet somebody manages to do that. Uh, luckily, Century Mo's got it. They left the details at reception. We've been in contact with them already. They've admitted they've done it. They saw the cars recorded, you know. So Century Mode, it's just a brilliant thing. It records the footage from the car's cameras when the car is parked. So it's good that we've got that. Um, so it's a bit of a dampener, but I'll see just light damage. We'll get it sorted. Do you know what though? Because it's red, it's more difficult. This is one reason. I'm ultra red though, I love it. Um, it's harder to paint. So this really, because it's red and you paint it, it has to go into a proper body shop to blend it out. If it was white or black, a little smart up here, here, that'll polish out nice and easy. That's why I don't have a red car. Um, much as I like the look of it, especially ultra red. This one isn't ultra red, it's the older red. Um, but yeah, a bit of a pain to do any little paint repairs and stuff like that. So uh, nonetheless, we'll get it sorted out. And uh, onwards with our journey today as we go over the Upland Hills and Edinburgh, probably go over, over the bridge and then head west to our cabin, a bit more in the middle of nowhere in Scotland. So right, we're hitting the road, packing up the car and off we go.
now two o'clock in the afternoon on Monday and we're at the Edinburgh Tesla Service Centre and Chargers. So the uh, plan is we're just going to top up both cars to 90% and then do the same journey onto our cabin where we're going to then stay for a couple of days. So actually this is going to be the first chance to go from the same percentage where the batteries both haven't been treated exactly the same and do the same journey in convoy. And so this will be the best chance yet to get an idea of comparison. We've also done a couple of charges on the way up here, but I couldn't really compare um, a great deal then because we're on V2 charger, shared power, and we literally just stopped for as long as we needed to stop, actually. So um, when we left the, the Scotch corner, one had more charge than the other one and all that kind of stuff. So uh, this is us. We're going to go to 90%, stop the cars, unplug and go. Right, we're here. So let me show you trip information. I don't know what the other car's got, uh, but here we are. So um, we arrived at Glenorchy Farm, 57% battery. So since charge, 99 miles, 24 kilowatt hours used, 240 watt hours per mile. Uh, pretty cold outside, so it's only four degrees now. In fact, we're only just below the snow line and it has been raining and sort of sleet most of that journey. 52% battery. 99 miles, you see the same distance, 25 kilowatt hours used, 252 watt hours per mile. So there you go, there's a the difference. The Highland is just a bit more efficient, uses a bit less energy, got a bigger battery than that one, so it goes a bit further. Simple as that really. Okay, I think I need to get out of this weather. I'll see you tomorrow. James Bond fans should recognise this. This is the shot they used from Skyfall. And it is absolutely spectacular. This is quite cool. Just got the notification, latest update. So downloaded it and it's about to install. And this is the one that should include uh, the matrix headlights. So pretty excited about that. And what's quite interesting as well, that is downloading from the Starlink. Seems very apt. And now we've got the other car using their chargers. Again, just done in here. I turned the camera off for a couple of days there, so enjoyed a bit of family time, a bit of a break. Uh, but now it's Friday, we're packing up to leave. And again, big thanks to Fiona and Tristan who run this uh, farm here and these cabins. Uh, brilliant place, brilliant host, brilliant facilities. Uh, it is working farm as well, so if you come at the right time, you might even see things like little piglets and stuff like that. And of course, we've got the car chargers there, which means you can explore this area with these, and then you've got full charge every day. Um, there are quite a lot of chargers around. In fact, there's one just up the road, a public fast charger, but it makes it easy. And then they've got that brilliant little hydro power plant there. Uh, so we're gonna head off now. And actually, we've got to stop over tonight. Actually, we're not doing the whole journey back in one go for a change. We're actually doing a stop over in Penrith. So a little drive down there, a bit more scenery to see, and then we're off. But again, fantastic cabins. If ever you want a good break in Scotland with an EV, I highly recommend Glen Orkey Farm. Righto, have you got everything? Are we off? All right, kids ready, let's go. Oh my God, can I not wait to get this back and get it valeted?
we are heading south, um, but right now we are in a village called Wanlockhead, which is the highest village in Scotland. So there's definitely no uh, altitude gain from any efficiency numbers. I've used 41% of my battery to cover 131 miles, which means I would have a real world range of 320 miles based on the efficiency there, which is 232 watt hours per mile been drier, been more efficient. Now the heating's still been on all day, um, but it's drier roads and that seems to make a big difference to efficiency. And we've obviously climbed to quite a high altitude here. So it was running about 218 watt hours per mile since we climbed. Now I'll just get hold of Mike in the other car. Benji's now is 26. He's exactly 50%. Now he's got 251 watt hours per mile compared to my 232. So this in that case was uh, very nearly 20 watt hours per mile more efficient. 262 mile range on that car for that trip, but compared to the over 300 mile range on this car for that trip. And that's it from the highest village in Scotland. Morning, Saturday morning today, and uh, we just stopped to the excellent T-Bay services, always where I recommend a stop because you get proper food and a nice shop and not the usual kind of uh, KFCs and McDonald's and junk like that. In the time it's taken us to nip in, have breakfast and coffee as quick as we can, the cars are both pretty brimmed up. I'm on like about 96% and the red ones are something like 98, 99% now. So, uh, and of course charging in the morning like this is always a bit quieter as well, kind of mid late afternoons always gets busier. So now we're basically heading back, but we're going to take a little detour first across to Lake Windermere. So the car is three weeks old today and that's 3,000 miles covered. And who says you can't do a lot of miles in an electric car? Hi guys, right, it's 3.30 in the afternoon, down at Warwick Services now. So we haven't charged since we left T-Bay, right up by the Scottish border. And in fact, we went from T-Bay across into the Lake District to Lake Windermere uh, for a late morning coffee. And beautiful it was, even though it was very foggy. Then we've driven all the way down to Warwick South Services and you're good to see they've expanded it. There's some more chargers here now. So you've still got the Tesla bank over here and then some more other chargers, Apple Green chargers here. Um, anyway, uh, look, the cars actually didn't need to stop. Again, we actually stopped for another wee on the way and then we stopped here because we needed the toilet and we were hungry and our daughter wants dinner, that sort of stuff. So in fact, my Model 3 Long Range Highland was saying I could drive home in one go, didn't even need to stop, since T-Bay via Lake Windermere all the way back to the south coast. Um, so I arrived here at Warwick South having covered 216 miles since the last charge, which took me to 97%. I've arrived here still with 30% battery remaining, averaging 226 watt hours per mile. And I used 49 kilowatt hours, so pretty efficient there. Remember that includes driving around the lakes, driving the speed limits on the motorway, a little bit of rain, heating on, all that sort of stuff. The older Model 3 arrived here from 100% charge at T-Bay, so 3% more than me, has got 20% uh, when we arrived here, and averaged 241 watt hours per mile, um, uh, and used 52 kilowatt hours, compared to my 226 and 49 kilowatt hours. So you can see my car um, more efficient, consistently in that time by about 15 watt hours per mile, so it's not massively so, but it is a bit more efficient coupled with the bigger battery really does give it effortless range I mean, properly effortless range to drive from T-Bay back to the south coast uh, just near Bournemouth in one go I don't think many people will actually do that we certainly haven't as we've stopped for lunch and stuff like that um, so that's it now we're going to go our separate ways from here so that's pretty much it for this video the only thing I'll do is when I get back I'll take a, a log of the total trip our Scotland trip how many miles we covered in total and then I'll see if I can work out some calculations on, on what that would have cost as well uh, and then you can say that your Passat diesel would have done it for far cheaper I'm sure that's what's going to happen uh, We've had a week of, of driving in some pretty rubbishy weather sometimes loaded up uh, rain, standing water on the road has made quite a lot of difference to efficiency, we do notice that. Um, plus, obviously, in a trip like that, you have preheating for supercharging, which uses more energy to heat the battery to make charging faster. Um, but overall, look, that's four miles per kilowatt hour, and I think that's actually pretty good for a loaded up car. 
Um, quite often driving, actually, when we're in Scotland, there'd be five of us in the car. And by the way, when three people across the back seats, they said it's a bit more comfortable than the previous car. Um, slightly flatter seat bases don't push you in if you're sat on the side. So um, that's where maybe the back seats have been improved a little bit, by the way. Um, but um, that as an overall, given the amount of times I've been driving in rain and wet roads and in cold conditions, even some snow and up and down hills in Scotland and with loads of luggage and with five people and the heating on every time we've been driving, um, I don't think that's bad at all actually. So uh, very good and an extremely capable long distance car this. Uh, we essentially only ever had to stop when we needed to stop and that's the key thing here. Uh, you can obviously do uh, over 300 miles capable in this car um, but you need to stop sooner than that. You've got to think 300 miles or 350 miles that this car can do if you're driving gently in good conditions is, is Scotland to the south coast in one go, which you just can't do in one go, you know, especially traveling with family and uh, kids and everything. So, um, but the range capability of this means you can just go out driving, not really think about it. You stop off for lunch or dinner and it really does top right up again. And you just don't ha ever have any range anxiety. I think one interesting thing with this was that um, ultimately I could have done exactly the same thing with the standard range car. And we did a video before comparing the range of the standard range versus long range. And look, it's not really that far behind. It's very, very good. But I guess that means you are pushing that a little bit where you may be arriving with less than 10%. It might make you nervous. What if there's a diversion or the weather gets worse or something like that? And you just, ha you know, just haven't had any of that with this car um, because there's always been plenty in the tank, plenty of buffer. So, you know, to some people that's more important. I've been driving EVs for years, so I'm very comfortable running low to the end. But, um, you know, without ever having a range anxiety to it, it speaks a lot, doesn't it? And although most times you charge to 80%, you do have that extra 20%. If you had a standard range, you thought, actually, I'm doing that long journey, or I'm going into the highlands of Scotland, you know, it'd be nice to have that extra 20% of charge capable, um, which obviously the long range does have. And it, it's, a, it's a nice thing to have. It, it takes any strain off or any worry off and it means you do have that vast range available to you and yet still with some very good efficiency. So there we have it at the end of a Scotland trip. Great car to do it in. The only thing I'm really going to moan about is the auto wipers. Um, not brilliant but we do have the adaptive matrix headlights now so just filmed a little separate thing about that and uh, I'll talk to you a bit more about that in future videos as well. So that's it for me for now. Thank you for watching. Make sure you stay subscribed for more stuff coming up.